Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Resourceful. This is 19. Wow, we. Um, and I've loved meeting so many people, sharing so much good advice. Uh, now, we've been a month into this version of lockdown, uh, and many schools have maybe found their choice of platforms, some using Teams, some using Desmos, uh, but there are other options as well. And um, when I create these series, people come to me sometimes with suggestions, and today's guest is really keen to talk about um, what he and his multi academy trust are using. I mean, he's in charge of the maths in the multi academy trust after all, uh, but they are using Nearpod. So we're going to look at its use in the classroom and remotely. So I welcome to the stage Guy Carpenter. Come on down. Do, 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 do. Hi, Tom. How are you doing, buddy? All right? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Um, and I know that you volunteered to do another video, which we won't say any more about for now, um, but it's going to be about math pedagogy. I'm really looking forward to that. However, let's focus on this. We're in lockdown. Um, some of us are, uh, I don't know how best to describe it, trying to stay positive, but sometimes you just don't feel you're getting from the lessons what you want to get. And uh, I know that you got in contact with me and said, look, we, we're using Nearpod because it's, it's, it's working great for you. Yeah, I think we've uh, explored quite a few platforms as we've been going along and we found that Nearpod has a real, um, it has really improved our engagement and our, our chance to assess and provide feedback live during lessons. So we've found something that really works for our learners and they really enjoy it. And we've got lots of feedback to say that they've really um, taken a lot from using it in terms of how they, they engage with, with these online platforms. Awesome. Now, the one thing I haven't done, guys, any good interview would do would have interview, uh, introduced you properly first. I said Guy Carpenter, but I haven't said who you are, what you do. So if you could tell us what your name is, where you come from and what it is you do. Yeah, my name's Guy Carpenter. I'm the lead director for Dudley Academy Trust. Uh, I also work for the NCTM um, Maths Hub, Central Maths Hub, as a mastery specialist and the PD lead. Awesome. And so how did it come about? Then? We'll look at, you're going to talk us through it. Uh, and see how you're using it in your trust and uh, as you said how it's gone in the lessons and really interesting to hear what you said there about the immediate feedback because that's certainly the biggest thing I think when everyone's on Twitter sharing how do I get this how do I get that um how did it get you to the, how did you get to the stage where you decided right we're going to use Nearpod uh, so I was introduced to Nearpod by our sponsor Dudley College in October of last year um, and obviously we came back into schools and we sort of parked it for, for a little while but as we came back into the second lockdown we decided to really get to grips with something that was going to be useful across multiple subjects and across multiple schools that we could share as a trust so I took the lead on uh, demonstrating what it could do and how it could be used in multiple subjects but specifically with the focus on, on maths um, and we've sort of based it around the EEF guidance and the myth busting from Ofsted. And uh, so the EEF guidance shows us that um, we need to be able to provide quality rather than how a lesson is delivered, a quality lesson. We need to be able to have access for all learners, peer interaction, support pupils to work independently, uh, and to have different approaches to remote learning suitable for the content and pupils. So I think that's the one we sort of aimed it at. And you're putting um, on the spot a little bit, Guy. Are you, the slot, I, I know you, you've got something prepared for that. Is that something we can see, just to yeah. remind us of? Because sometimes when you, well, we all know dual coding, it's nice to be seeing it at the same time as well, if you can share your screen. Uh, but yes, there is there is strong guidance from the EF now and, and um, other bodies as to what we should be thinking. Um, and there it is. Yeah, I, I thought I'd seen you made this. Um, okay, uh, I'm just going to go press pause a second because we're going to try and work it out if we can just get the left-hand side. I'm going to press pause just a moment. Excellent. See, dual coding, we don't want to be put off by the small thing on the right hand side because I was immediately reading what you're going to tell us next. So now we're focusing on this. Thank you, guys, for that. <laughs> no, um, no problem. Yeah, these are the key points, as you were saying. So please continue. Yeah, so we decided that quality is more important than how a lesson is delivered. So we looked at how different variety of ways. So, like looking at a live lesson through Teams, and then looking at Nearpod. We've also used Desmos as well to a certain extent, but not as much as we've used Nearpod, but people are also using um, Hegarty Maths to, to, to look at those different variety, the different variety of platforms that are there. But I think the, the main thing that we're going to be working through is these different approaches to remote learning suitable for the content, because obviously sometimes Desmos may not be suitable or Hegarty might not be suitable for the class that you've got. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, okay, so do, is there anything that you want to take us before we get to Nearpod or is there a, a or should we just dive straight in? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, we can we can dive straight in. If I end that slideshow, awesome. And if I can share, 
be it these stages if I press pause will it will, will it, I don't know it will suddenly magically appear ta-da and, and it appears um right let, t talk us through it because uh, I know nothing nothing at all yeah so um Nearpods are free to all those who sign up so you need to register an account uh, there are some caveats that go with that that there is when you sign in that there is a certain amount of access that you gain once you log in so the other part is paid for but there is a free element to it so the, the caveat is that you can have 40 uh, attendees to a lesson uh, and you've got 100 megabytes of storage but if you're designing them uh, relatively small then you will be able to get quite a few as you can see on my screen there's quite a few that are there already um, nearpod has quite a lot of already pre-existing lessons so we've got a nearpod library here which you can actually type in and search for, if we say solving equations. It'll come up with a number of lessons and a number of activities that you can actually access uh, as part of the Nearpod program. So this is a lesson based on solving algebra. Mm -hmm. So you can click in, see whether it's, you can preview it to see whether it's useful for you. So it goes on through some notes about what it's about with the objective there and then goes through the directions of what's supposed to be done by the learner. And then we get started with our quiz. So there's already some built in built elements in it that you would be able to use on their own, or you could integrate them in some of your lessons as well. So if you've got add to my library down at the bottom here, you could add that to your library very easily and then use that as part of your lesson. So similar to Desmos, things are already built into it that you can have a play around with and have a look at during this, during your session or during your, your first experience of it. But I suppose the main thing for us is to actually look at how we import our own lessons that we've already designed into Nearpod. So if we click on create and we click on lessons to create, it brings up a blank page, okay? So what we've got here is a chance to drag and drop a lesson that you've already created. So a PowerPoint you've already created, so you don't need to reinvent the wheel and we actually then just drag and drop the lesson into there and it starts to upload it. We'll get to that one. Amazing. Click OK. And then the file's processing. So it's a very small file, so it shouldn't take too long. And so that will divide, say, if there's 10 slides on your PowerPoint, it will create 10 slides onto here. Yes. Oh. Yeah. And there you go. So there are a number of slides there that have been added to that PowerPoint. Um, what it doesn't do is if you've got animations, it actually just uploads the files as pictures. So it doesn't include the animations. So that might be something to be worth, worth noting as you're going along. But as you can see, if you click in, you can edit the picture. You can add, change the background, etc. You can add a layout to it. So you can add some text or a title to it, similar to PowerPoint. And once you're happy with that, then you can save and exit. And that will be there as you're going along. But I suppose the main thing that we need to be talking about is how we make it more interactive. It's okay importing your PowerPoint in, um, but actually it's the interactiveness and the activities that are there for us as teachers to assess and that AFL tool as we're going along during those lessons. So that's what we need to do. So we could add a slide here. So we could add a slide. And what happens is that this box comes up and we can add a video, we can add extra slides, we can have a website in there. We can also put some audio over there. But the main thing here is this activities section here. And these are the ones that the students will engage with and will, you'll get your feedback from their engagement with the activities. So I'm gonna start off by doing a matching pairs. So similar to Desmos where you do your card sort, we've got a matching pairs activity here. So we've got an instruction here, we can put a match, As, as always, when you're being watched by somebody, you can't type. <laughs> Everyone does the same thing. I know I'm like that. Uh, if someone's watching me, I cannot type for love nor money. So you're under pressure, but don't worry about it. So Mark, This is my normal typing time, so... <laughs> no news reasons, brilliant. Okay. Okay, so if we can add a pair, you get two boxes. So you can either add the text in, or you can add an image. So again, you can drag and drop. So if I can take uh, this one here from another file, I Here's can drag that in. Earlier. Yeah, and I can drag that in and I could write 2x plus, uh, plus 5 equals uh, x plus 12. Okay, and then you either say done or add another pair. So I've got another one here. 
I'm intrigued. When you were doing the text there, if you could just type something into it again, um, it had a pi symbol in the bottom left. Was that to, to do um, mathematical te uh, typing? Yes. So we just, we just got an image on there. Again. Yeah, let me just go back. back. Yeah. There so in go. fact, if you wanted to change that X, you could probably do the curly X. Yes, yes, you could. Cool. So if you've got, pop that back in there. That's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Let's add it again. Add the image. There we go. Pop that in there, and there it works. Okay. So enter the text. Got a pi symbol down here. Yes, you have got the option to put some mathematical symbols in. Okay. As you're going along. So it has got math symbols, not as many as what Desmos has, but it does have that function there as you're going along. So you can put there 2x plus 12 equals 28. Okay. And if I'm done, I click done, and then that's set up. You can have as many pairs as you like. And when the students view that on their screen, they will have these randomized um, accessible on a phone. So they would tap the one that they want and then tap the next one to match it to make a pair. Okay, so this, this obviously what we're seeing is the teacher view. The people yeah. view would be um, some of the images in one place on the screen, some of the images or text on other places on the screen. Yes. And do they just have to put them next to each other or on top of each other? And, and, and then I suppose we'll have a look at how you know that's been marked and how it's been done. Yeah, so when they see the images, they would tap this image and then tap the appropriate one they believed it to be next. And then that would go green okay. uh, to say, yes, they've got it right. Uh, and on the screen as a teacher, you would have a tick next to how many tries they've done or how many they've got correct. And I'll show you that later on when the reports really? through the reports are generated. Nice one. So yeah, nice one. so so we've got a, a matching activity. And I think where what that does, it allows you to do a similar activity from that you would do in a classroom. So we we mimic what's going on in the classroom within this, this actual platform that we've got here. So we've got matching activity. You can move them around to where you want it. So you could put puppet anywhere you wanted. So if I put it there, that's that's where it would occur in that sequence of lessons. So I think that is a really nice activity. You get a lot of information from it. Open starter, do now activity, really nice quick activity for learners to do. You're um can't, please do add another slide because that, that slide where you uh, that the area you showed there was matching pairs. You showed there were quite a few activities there as well. It's also yes. a city builder or something. Um, yeah, so if you take the add slide and go to activities again, right. we've got um, a, cool. a poll. So you can do a poll similar to Microsoft Forms, similar to the chat function. So you could put in here, um, let's move this out of the way. I might want to put a picture in. So I put an image in, uh, and then I can do drag and drop again. And I've put a picture in from uh, Craig Barton's diagnostic questions in there. And then I could just put in a B, C, and D. And then you could okay. pop in there, please select the correct answer. You can then, while they're doing it, it comes up on the screen which answer they've done, and you can check which one they do. And then you can have that in interaction with them live through dialogue, through Teams, or through the chat room to say, if you answered A, why did you answer A, et cetera. So you can have that dialogue with them as well. Yeah. Do you have the same functionality where you can choose which one's the right answer like you did? When yeah, so here um, you which would have to, um, yeah, so here's a, a poll which one they think, then you could go and talk about it. But yes, in the quiz elements, you've got one where you can actually select the right answer oh, so uh, as to which one is. So yeah. Quiz is different so, the poll, because the poll yes. pulls it back from them, so you can have the conversation, the information yes. that you want to have in the classroom. But when you want it to be a quiz, so was that on the same thing when we went back when it was a new slide? And it yeah, so if I save that, we can use this. Um, let's put a D in there. Oh, yeah. Well, we've got, is, I think it's saying we haven't put a question in, but that's nothing. We, we right. point for that. Um, so, yeah, so let's have a look at this then. So these activities. Yeah. Um, so there's poll, there's poll, there's quiz. So you've told yeah. them, really, you've got the difference from that straight away, I guess. Yeah, so the quiz, same thing. You could drop the picture in into this box here, put your question in, but here there's a little tick instead to say which one is the correct answer. Brilliant. So you'd be able to gauge the, uh, it's not an AFL tool, a hinge question yes. more than to, to move on uh, to differentiate if needed or go back, really recall or stretch if needed if everybody was okay with that. Um, so that's that in terms of the quiz. You can. 
once you've put these in, you can add a slide. So if you're talking about a hinge question, when you've got your actual slides up and you're doing this from a student view and you're monitoring from a teacher view, you can add a slide in live at any time you want to. So if you realize that they didn't get quite get the answer you, you wanted from your poll, you can add a slide in, but we'll, that will be need to be shown through the student view and the teacher view once we've got one set up. Okay. Okay. Cool. So cancel that one. I can't help it. I don't know. Had you planned to show when you would add the slide? What's that mountain thing? Yeah. So if you start to set up a quiz, you can change it to um, a sort of fun game which relies on speed and accuracy. And I think this is something, it's called time to climb. So the time to climb. Sorry. I had to <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's similar to the quiz. So you set, set it up same, same as you would do. So you can enter the questions that you need, put the answers in, add a question next. You can put images in there as well for your questions. And what happens is that the students will select a character, a bear, a giraffe, mm. uh, etc. Um, let's set one up. Let's set one up. Let's just do time some... tables. Go on. We can. We can. Um, we can okay. Kind of the on these. Oh, there's a question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. Mm, very good. Okay. Add another question. You didn't have to think about the question there, did you? Just... <laughs> <laughs> no, just couldn't find the keys. Okay. So we set up two questions. Yeah. And we save that. It's not going to. It's going to ask me for a fair question, isn't it? It's going to ask me for the right options, isn't it? Yeah. So even so, if you are, let me see how you get rid of that then, because it's saying. If you've, oh dear, I've added an extra question. How did you remove, how would you remove that? Because it, so it's, it's asking me to give the correct answer. Oh, so six, six okay. there, and it's asking me to give the correct answer. You can move the answers around. So if you feel like you've done all A yeah. at that point, <laughs> which is usually in the way. Yeah. And then it says here, you haven't put anything in. So if we put another one in. But there, can you remove that? Three. Imagine you've added it, you said. Yeah, oh, there's a, there is a little delete button up here, a little trash can up here. Oh, okay, put in. Yeah. And we can say, if we want to do this question, we can. Yeah. Um, with these, you can add a timer as well. So you can add a timer on how, how long you want the learners to spend on the activity. And that's with most slides as well. So if you really want a quick uh, sort of time save of rock stars esque. Um, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So you could do that. Um, but then you've got the added incentive of having that bear that or giraffe that climbs, climbs the mountain as you're going on. So if we save that, we can have a go at that later. I want to see the bear climb. <laughs> you can't leave me hanging like this. Hi, um, not wait. <laughs> we'll have a look at that at the end. Yeah, um, yeah. So when we can see this, the student one. So it's there, time to climb's there. So if we go into it. Activity, this, this, this can feel so dry sometimes. There's one thing that I, I really feel at the moment that I just, you know, I'm trying to bounce around on my lessons and bring whatever energy I can, but anything like that, which is just a little bit of inter, um, well, fun element, let's be honest, because it's yeah. not fun for many people right now. Year 11 particularly like this one as well. So we've had a lot of trials with year 11. They particularly like the time to climb. They've had a lot of feedback from them saying they really enjoyed it. It's just, yeah, like you said, to get away from that monotony of uh, yeah. those the, the every day staring at the screen. So it is a bit different. So that's, that's really nice to do. Um, in fact, you can actually set it up in quiz and then convert it to a time to climb as well. So if you set it up as a quiz, you can then convert it to a time to climb. So if you're going to do it for year 10, then possibly replicate it for a year seven who might want the engagement through those cuddly uh, bears and giraffes, then that's something that you could do. So the next thing that we could look at is um, we've got this here, this um, diagnostic questions. So you could use a poll to do it. You could use a quiz to do it. What we've got here across the top is something that's called convert to draw. So you can convert it to a draw. So similar to this, where you've got the draw function, uh, that you've got the ability to draw lines and pictures. You can convert that. If you click that, you can convert it to a draw element where all students will be able to circle using their mobile phone or their tablet, circle the correct answer, and all the answers to those will be provided on your screen as you're going along. So even if you had a blank screen, then you're giving everybody a free whiteboard here. Yes. Ah. Ah, now there's an element. So not only can you write on the slides, so you can give everyone a whiteboard with whatever mm -hmm. background you want it to be, or you yes. can give everybody a whiteboard. Yes. Nice. 
yeah, really, really nice function. Um, and allows them to try again if, if you verbally feedback through them through Teams, allows them to, to try again, resubmit any raise, et cetera, as well. And you can actually vet it before it comes through on the screen as well. So you can see what they're writing or drawing and then say, yes, that's okay. Um, you're right, you're able to submit that. So that's a, a good function as well. Um, I think we're going to have maybe one slight drawback of the way we're doing this today is that we can't see a load of students work at the same time. Um, can you give kind of any kind of comfort to the fact that I'm, I'm hoping the teacher, um, teacher functionality is quite straightforward? Yeah, so it is similar to uh, PowerPoint where you will be leading the pace of the lesson. Um, and you can set the timers up on each slide. So if you clicked into your matching activity, you can set the timer but in the, the corner. Ability, but the ability to also see all the people. So again, you've got you've given everybody that whiteboard. And um, um, again, I think we're going to be some uh, unless there is a way of it showing it today, but I, I can't imagine there is that we can see all 10, 20, 30, 40 pupils. Yes, they will come up similar to what you see here. So the little screens will pop up and they will they will populate. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a lag in how they appear, but yes, they will come up similar to what the screen is here um, with their names underneath. So you can see who they are. You can hide the names, so there's no bias either. Ooh, that's um, that's, that's yeah. an important step to the children. So yes. Important to the pupil. Yeah. Completely. So yeah, it, it is very clear. Um, and as with all of the feedback that you get from each of the activities, you can see the whole range of students across all of the class uh, at all times. And you can then click on them as well to see what they're actually doing uh, individually and make comments as well. And you can share those, those screens. So you can share that one person's screen with the rest of the class to talk through some of the concepts that they've actually been putting on their screen. Good stuff. Okay. Um, tell us, keep, keep going, this is fun. Yeah. So. <laughs> More activities. Um, one thing that most people would find really useful is the open-ended question. That is to put a question on there and they've got, just got free reign of text. So that's the usual standard stuff similar to Desmos. So just a, a free reign of text, um, useful for languages uh, as well as maths and, and English, etc. So long, longer answer questions, typically um, the Desmos sort yeah. of style. Um, the other one that I quite like is the collaborative board. So what this is like a post-it board. So I used this for uh, opening to my lesson the other day. So I asked them how they felt um, and to describe themselves as a colour. So I entered the, the question at the top and then description. How are you? Description, describe yourself as a colour. So grey being bored, brown being tired, uh, yellow being happy. And then it all comes up on the board at the same time so they can see who or what people are feeling um, nice if you're just asking a question about what they already know so in terms of let's where are we what do we understand by um, bar modeling or solving equations and they can just put their thoughts down all in one place and again you can see that as you're going along and you can actually vet what comes through so you can actually check what they're putting through putting on their post-it notes before you actually upload it to the shared screen <laughs> yeah if you, if you can vet it i like that uh, very useful that they, um, can they can, so you, can you see who's written on these by the way so if yes. one child decides to share a lovely image uh, for your lovely, <laughs> lovely uh, text it does tell you who it is so you, yes it does that. okay yeah with yeah so it, 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 but with the ability of padlet and jamboard maybe uh, but you can actually see who's doing the extra sticky note yes you can and it will come up that you've got a notification that someone's put a sticky note in there and it'll ask you whether you want to accept it or whether you don't uh, and then it'll get pinged back and saying that's not accepted yeah. so that's a really nice feature as well <laughs> brilliant <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, I think I think when, when lockdown began, we started getting all these messages about um, how do you stop the children being silly. So it's nice that that one's there. Yeah, I mean, it, it could replace your chat function um, because of that safeguarding element in there. Um, because we know that the chat function may not always be uh, monitored as well as we, we would like. Yeah. Um, so we've got that function there. So moving on to the next one, I think the next one, the fill in the blanks. Quite often, we, I don't think we tend to do this in a maths class, but you might want to try and look at filling in some of the blanks of an equation, a formula, or something similar, or giving a multiple choice options for an answer. So what you can do is that I've got a piece of text here that I've just... I think there's lots of use for this. It's certainly, I mean, we're, we're, 
I would imagine many people have been uh, not using their knowledge organizers as much since they've got uh, into this situation. But here is an opportunity to recreate that because I always do quizzes from the uh, um, uh, from the uh, knowledge organizers, and it's a fill the gap exercise. Uh, so it looks like you are about to create something like that. It's here's the sentence. So the definition of a so and so is etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So I took this from Douglas uh, remote teaching. Uh, teaching the online classroom um, and what you can do is you've I've just taken this and paraphrased it popped it in here as a piece of text if you click the next button it then says click words on the right to add to the word bank so I'm going to take out um, this word here and what happens is it pops it in there I'm also going to take out those two words let's take out that one so I'm, just, I'm assuming all you're doing is, is highlighting it with your um yes with the cursor yeah yeah and then again i can just go through and i can click as many different words as possible and they all appear on the other side and then once you've done those gaps will appear in the activity for the learners so they then drag and drop the words in back into the, the, the passage okay. so they can actually uh, yeah really nice uh, works well for definitions, works well for etymology of words and other things uh, that we're trying to build in the vocab, build in those definitions to, for, for understanding. So it's a really nice activity. Uh, yeah, so that's something different um, for learners to do. And breaks up those, just do the maths, just do the maths. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, um, so when you go to the add slide, can you go to add slide just a moment? Because we keep yeah. you keep clicking straight to activities. But yeah. Looking at some of the options there, just the idea of making sure that you link to another website or, or a certain video that you want them to watch. Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't know if we're going to get look at many of these, if any. But at least look. At, I just like the idea of being that quick to see. Here's a PDF. There's a website I want you to see. There's a video I want you to see. Um, that that's really nice as well. Um, yeah. So. The PDF viewer, you would just drag and drop again, same as the, the PowerPoint, drag and drop it into the, the lesson that you're creating. The web content, if you click on there, you just type in the website. So, um, Tom Manners. <laughs> UK. <laughs> you didn't. Even. Even. <laughs> well, that's not going to work, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Some websites might be blocked by your school. I'd, I'd be really, I'd be gutted. <laughs> oh, there you go. Let's just see. So it, it's loading up there. Okay, I'll look at that. Look there at you that go. Face. Look at that. Your, your face appeared on the screen. Yeah. So that's good. And then you can save that. And then that goes straight into your lesson. So if they do have a Microsoft Forms link that you want to put in there, you can put that in there. If all your evidence is gathered through Microsoft Forms, then you can do that. Or you can link it straight to Desmos. So you've got a bit of both. If you try to plan on drawing graphs or... Um, using the graphing calculator there you can link that in you just opened a whole range <laughs> of possibilities just by yeah. pointing out the fact that and this is this is something that wouldn't occur to you unless this is said out loud to you you can use more than one platform yeah you just said, pointed out the fact that if you've got a great desmos activity you've got a great teams quiz that someone's made and there were some brilliant people sharing stuff online is it tim dolan sharing um on a padlet a load of quizzes from Microsoft Forms, yeah. Um, for example, and people on Desmos, obviously, there's loads if you Google them. Um, but you just pointed out, tell you what, in the middle of my Nearpod lesson, let's go to, let's go somewhere else. That's fine. Yeah, and there's no like, need for them to input the, 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 the code or anything like that. It's just straight delivery, straight to where you need them to go. Yeah. Um, and similar with the video, if you've got an MP4 you could, that you've, done, you've downloaded off YouTube, you can pop that straight in as well. So if you download one of your videos, missions, et cetera, et cetera. But exactly. Yeah, yeah but just make sure that's very, very clear. Yeah. <laughs> so we have got multiple options, not just the activity. So there's multiple options. Like you say, it's cross-platform as well. That, 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 that opens up a whole huge bank of possibilities. That's super stuff. Um, I, I, there are lots here. Are there any more you really want to show us? So I know which one I'm kind of hoping uh, to show next. Which, which one do you want to go to? Memory test looks fun. Uh, the memory test, it's similar to um, childhood game. You put your image in. I haven't really used this one myself, so you tested me a little bit here, Tom. Uh, so so you... Can I assume it's a, um, you turn it over and you find the, let's say, a picture of five uh, rabbits, and then you see the, the numeral five and go, ta -ding! Um, uh, I think, yes, it's, it's similar to that. I, I believe that it's five rabbits and then five rabbits. Um, I don't know whether there is an option to put a different 
image in the one in the, the book as I've not used it then um, no, okay, that, well, might well, be, that might need exploring you can't give everything away in just in this, this one no. hour. I mean you've got to give something for the people to go and do themselves come on um, awesome. um, now I know you said you, we're going to look at some elements from the uh, from the teacher perspective but um, yeah so uh, I think it'd be worthwhile um, going through how you can assign it and how the students log in so once you've got your um, well we've got a lesson here um, we can save and exit, call it. Yeah, yeah. Name that one. Oh, it's gone now. That's a shame. <laughs> we can save and exit it, and it gets stored in your library, as you can see. Saving there. Now you said it was a 10, no, 20. Uh, 100, meg 100, okay. meg 100 megabytes. Per yeah. lesson or per everything? For everything, so I've got eight in there at the moment. I find that the way that I'm delivering at the moment is that I use Nearpod to supplement my PowerPoint. So I share my PowerPoint through Teams, and then at times I will leave my working on the shared PowerPoint and then use Team, then use Nearpod to um, to allow students to access the the activity, so the, the work, the doing of the maths that they've just had a, had a, um, a, a an example given. Yeah. Is there so, a way, I mean, that lesson, Tom Manor's lesson is superb. If you want to share it with your fellow staff, yeah, I'm assuming that's possible as well then. Yeah, click your ellipsis here, and then you can see share, teach, share with teachers. You can duplicate it, you can export it to a PDF, so you can save it, um, or you can delete it. So share with teachers. You can do it by email, social media. You can have the link directly. You can embed it into a PowerPoint, any of those. Uh, again, you can have a preview link only, all the editable links so they can take it and do what they want with it. Um, so it's a really flexible uh, platform. When sharing with students, you've either got a student paced um, lesson, which they will be able to access through this code and then require student responses at every to prevent skipping. So they will be able to access through the code through joinnearpod.com and they will be able to Put, go through that lesson at their own pace, doing the activities as we've just put, popped in there without you inputting anything to them live or any sort of feedback to them. And you can share that using these um, seven different options at the bottom. So you can use via social media, email, you can give them the link. It links directly to Teams, which is what we're using. So if you click onto the Teams icon, it brings up your Teams account, hopefully. Right, I, I've got a feeling some people will be still balking at the fact that you only get 100 megabytes each. And the element, yeah. that, that, that one we just created would have taken up maybe 5% of that. And, and you'd be a little bit like, oh. is, there, is there anything limiting you from signing up using different email accounts as far as you work? I'm guessing it's 100 megabytes per sign up. Um, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think that'd be a problem. As long as different accounts, yeah. In case you want to try and store some, I'm, I'm hoping that's not anything wrong to suggest that. But I'm just trying to think of a way that if you if you are struggling within that 100 megabytes, because I, I imagine that might be somewhat problematic. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I think if we if I go back and click off this, if you look at that one that we've just put on was six megabytes. Hmm. Um, that one's one. That one's a large one there. A Nearpod demonstration that's got quite a few, it's got like 10 activities in it and the PowerPoint, so that's 15 megabytes. So the ones that I've created have just got activities so around two megabytes. So you could have up to 50 in here okay. if you needed to. So it has got some limitations, but if you if you are if you are using dual um, platforms in terms of using Teams to share a PowerPoint and then using Nearpod without building the, the, the presentation into Nearpod, then you're going to limit the size of your yep. files and you're going to get more out of it so okay. if we yeah so if we go back to it we've, we've done our um our presentation so we've got student paste so they've got the code we've launched it and we're going to share it via teams you can share it directly with a channel or you can create it as an assignment so most people have classes set up within teams you choose your class i have got any classes on my on this one you click it enter the title enter the instructions and then assign it and that will go to their teams account that you've got linked to your school so it's integrated fully with microsoft teams so you don't need to do anything else it just launches it automatically you don't need to copy and paste anywhere it just goes straight through in your uh, class account 
With the live participation, so this is where, where you might use your um, Microsoft Teams login to talk over the top of it. Most of the time, I've just asked them to log in and use the code. But you get again, you could log in through Google Classroom and it goes through Teams and pops into their chat. So it's all aimed at integrating with various different platforms that schools and academies are using across the board. Oh. And so this is the lesson that we would see. If you are, do you want to log in, Tom? Yeah, I can do. Um, okay, I'm, I'll press pause for just a second then while I try and log in. Okay, so I, I've uh, come back in. I've just gone to nearpod.com and it's quite simple. It's on the top first screen, so it wasn't difficult for me to find. W-L-E-G-T was the, the code you gave me to, to log in. Uh, and log in, I shall. Um, and this will be how I see it. So welcome to your lesson. Oh, my name is there before. Um, other optional name, Manomatics, my Twitter handle. Okay, so I don't know why I've got an optional name, but I'm, okay, so I can now, that was just an image, so that makes sense. So I'm just clicking through the lesson here. Do I, okay. Yeah. So I, what, what I will do, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I've got full control over this at this point. So at the moment, you're just seeing the EF guidance on yeah. remote learning. So I've got full guidance. So I'll be talking to you about that as we're going along as a teacher. I can then click you along in your slide or then move along. And that's the offset guidance about the myths about remote education that we, we, we can highlight as well. So again, I'm moving you along. Now you've got your matching activity. So Tom, you can see there's some matching uh, cards there. Will you be able to match the activity by clicking on the one that you want or is it, uh, and then clicking on the, the other one that matches? I purposely got it wrong, by the way. I just want to make that clear. Um, Shocking. Shocking. That, that would have shown on your screen and so on. So yeah, so if, yeah, and at the moment I can see that you've tried once and you've got zero matches, but you've also, um, now you've got two matches. So Yay. that's a, updated. So you've got instant feedback on how well you've done. And I can also see that you've tried three times. So you did one wrong and two correct. Yeah. Uh, and you've got two out of two. Cool. Okay. So, so I can be patient and, and play with my phone yeah. and check my yeah. Facebook while the teacher tries to start the lesson again. Yeah, and if you've got a timer on there, you'll be able to give an appropriate time for the okay. learners to, to complete that. So again, this is um, this is just a normal slide. Okay. So you won't be able to do anything on that. But then I, we've got the link to your website. Oh, 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 let's read this. Let's give a good half hour to do this. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Don't need, to, yeah. don't need to see more of me. And then we've got a draw it activity. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I'm, so I'm now you can use the tools at the bottom. Here. I'm just going to just play with one of these tools and see if I can do that. See the stuff. Where's that tool gone? So that all I'm doing is oh, a nice square around that one. Oh, can I type an answer? Yes, you can type answers oh, as well. So I think D because blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Blah, blah. And I can see that on my screen that you've done a nice that's a brown square around the green one and a light blue around. The uh, the blue one, and you've you've typed in blah blah blah. Uh, I've got submit, which would send it to. I mean, you're seeing me do it live anyway. Yeah. There's a, there's a, a lock and a delete. So delete will probably get rid of what I've done. The, yeah. lock, the, the lock symbol. Do you know what that does? Um, Padlock on, on the student. I think that locks everything in that you want to do. So that that means that you're finished, and then you submit. Oh, okay. It. So I'll submit that to you. Yeah, and it says I can edit the answer, but I'm waiting for you. And then I know it turns you green on my screen to say that you've submitted. So I can actually click on your slide. If I can just share my screen slightly. Yeah, but go, go ahead and share yours again. This is nice to be able to see me as the student here. <laughs> and the pressure I'm under straight away. Can you, can, are you okay to share it again? Um, where am I? We'll pause it to say valuable seconds. Ta da! So from your perspective, so, it's got my name at the top, so it shows yeah. the work I did and me writing lots of blah, blah, blah nonsense. That's yeah, so we can flick through using the arrows on either side, and we can also share that screen with everybody within the group as well, so they can all see what you've written uh, and have a discussion around that as well. Um, so if you wanted to do that, there's nobody else in the room. But you can see this is what you would originally get with all the little screens of yeah. 10, 12, 20, 30 people in the room. So that's, um, that's what the teacher would see. Fabulous. Um, the next one, I believe, is oh, time it? to climb. This is your little bear that's going to come up. Oh, oh, okay. So, do I need to should we do it from my perspective again? Um, no, I think it will be all right. So, when the teacher comes up, so we can choose a different background. So, we've got underwater, 
Valentine's Day. We'll click on Valentine's that Day. That sounds nice. Yeah, it's nice and uh, nice for a Friday afternoon. So you were waiting for the players. So Tom, you should be having uh, an invite into. Oh. Okay, choose my character. Oh, penguin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you get some nice music as well. Okay, so waiting for players. Okay, so I have a penguin on my screen. I'm, yeah. Oh, you can see it. Oh, Brill. Yeah, okay. there it is. So I can press start. Okay. What do I do? And we've got some nice timestamps. So count some down. Oh, three times two, six. Okay, I'm hoping it's showing this. I'm on my screen here. And I'm running yeah, and you can hell. see that Tom's moving up the mountain. <laughs> Yay! Um, can I shut it up? Yeah, I don't think we can do, okay. <laughs> do the sound. Oh, hold on, no, 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 I need to pause it. Oh, there you go. How do I stop it making noise? That, that, that's frustrating. Oh, we'll just click on, shall we? I'm turning off because we're, we're trying to talk. Oh, that was yeah. part of what I was talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, so <laughs> we, we can see what the students can see and what you can see. Um, if that was the end of the session, we could end the session okay. from the, the bit in the middle, and then or we could go to some reports. So what I've got here built into, I've just put some reports in, so you can see that I did a Neopod demonstration um, a few weeks ago, okay. and this is the general overview of what the participation was. So um, we can give a real good insight into how much learners have actually taken part in the actual session and how much they've actually got correct or uh, their attainment in those sessions as well. So that's what the overview. Then this is an example of the, uh, the poll and these are the responses that they would be given. And then it gives you a breakdown in terms of what percentage, et cetera, okay. on the side. And then this is the matching activity. So it tells you how many matches, how many tries, and whether they completed the activity. So if you're looking for evidence to suggest that someone has engaged or hasn't engaged based on something that they, that, um, they might have told the parents that they, oh yeah, I was in that lesson, but you're, you know that they were in the lesson but didn't do anything, you can actually print this off and you can actually download it per student as well. So it gives a breakdown per student as well, which could be just pinged off to heads of departments to, to, to analyze as well. Fabulous. Um, and there again, if you're open any question, it gives every piece of text that the, the learner writes in that response there, and then gives you a, a breakdown of who answered and who didn't as well. And, and, so that 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 element there. and that's actually real feedback from a training session you ran, isn't it? So yes, yeah, there, yeah, it is. Um, brilliant range of activities, gives students the ability to engage with lesson. It, it, um, yeah, it, it's like some. Fun feedback and time to climb is fun. It says that, that, mu <laughs> yeah. that music could possibly uh, be be done without. But apart from yeah. that, <laughs> it, it does great a bit, I think. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it is uh, <laughs> it is quite a fun thing to do. Awesome. Um, guys, yeah. thank, thank you for this. Is there anything else you feel we need to say? I, 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 um, and we keep these to a certain length. No, I think that's all right. I mean, just if you end the session as you go along. And then if you find that you want to re revisit your reports, your reports are generated in here. You can click on this. You can see that there's one student there. And you can click on the download. So you can download the whole session view or you can download the student view. So if you download the student view, you can click on individual students. So what I've done in mine is that I've used that and emailed the students directly um, with their own version of their own engagement. So they can use that to as, as evidence and collecting their, their, their work as they're going along in their, in their portfolio this time. So that's a really nice feature. And again, you can share those up here using just an email address. Awesome. Yeah. So that, I think that's, that's pretty much it. There's lots of other things in there. You can edit videos, you can put um, activities inside a video. So if you want, if you know there's an activity that you've got that's really nice, um, after you've imported your video, you can stop that video at one minute and then the activity will take over and then it will rejoin the video. Awesome. Yeah, so there's not some nice things. I, really, I think what you've done is um, that one sentence, I think you're, you almost said as a throwaway, but it's such an important thing. You can use different platforms. I want to go back to that because just being able to go over to this just for two or three of those elements. Can be, that's really useful. So that, that was really, really nice. Um, Guy, thank you for taking the time because you, you know, it was, you know, I didn't know anything about Nearpod, but you messaged me about it and said, look, this, this is what you're using. And uh, 
I'm loving learning uh, from, from people. So it's kind of you to give the time to prepare for this and to do this. However, all my guests are all subjected to the same um, question towards the end. Um, I need to check with you. Are you aware of the famous 80s album that I am trying to parody here? Uh, no. <laughs> no Sorry, textbook Sam. required. Phil Collins, absolute classic. Uh, the question, however, instead of, no, I say no textbook required, I think textbooks are fine. I just don't think they're always used very well. If you train people how to use textbooks, that's fantastic. But the greatest thing that's going on in maths education at the moment is people are sharing so much online. And so I ask you to let me know what your favourite online resource is and why. Uh, and uh, screen sharing has stopped apparently, so let me go back to it, because you have given me three. Here they are. Uh, the first one you chose was diagnostic questions. Yeah, uh, diagnostic questions, really good for identifying AFL in the classroom and stretching, challenging, um, and, you know, we need to go back to recall things and just to give an understanding of what your learners know at that particular time and to articulate their reasoning behind it as well, really important in the classroom. And, and given what we've just been saying about the polls and quizzes, really useful in remote learning. I mean, yeah. It's so powerful. And one of the biggest things I talk about with my trainee teachers and anyone I work with, actually, uh, this website. And of course, it was on resourceful number five or six. Craig Barton joined me to talk about this website. There is so much detail you can find. I'm mean, just clicking on one quickly. You can see what the pupils say, the insights at the bottom. And there you go. I just guessed, for example. Uh, I know this because four times five is, is 20. And they get the wrong answers and explain why they've got it wrong, but no one got that one wrong, apparently. Um, uh, the second website you chose, um, Hegarty Maths. Yeah, as a trust, we invest in Hegarty. We find that for homework and for um, learning based at home that it, it forms part of our curriculum, it was a really good base for a video to watch, to have some understanding, and then to do a quiz directly after that is directly linked to the information they've just used. Um, nice, real nice, link between the two activities uh, and then to put that down on paper as part of the Hegarty structure was a real nice way of, of firming up our homework policy. And, and what it does do is it, it develops independent learners. He's very big on that actually, he even says it quite clearly yeah. that independent learners will grow from it. And the point is for this episode, for this, um, uh, for this topic here in tier angles and polygons, the building blocks are there. You're going to have to know how to do angles in a triangle because he, he, the way he draws it is how many triangles inside the polygon. Uh, also be able to solve one step equations and simple the simple building blocks as well so very nice website in that respect uh, your final choice which is another resourceful episode previously uh, recorded uh, with carol and pete is the nctm's website why do you choose this um yeah having worked for the nctm since 2015 i think most of the development of staff uh, within our academy has come from this this website and this this organization such a wealth of knowledge in one place such a, a wealth of professionality within one place and such a leading edge um, of pedagogy and teaching practice that, that we can all learn from awesome completely agree guy um fella thank you so much for giving the time to do this uh, no problem really really enjoyed that uh, the penguin music's going to stick in my head now but it, it yeah was sorry about that. <laughs> why shouldn't it be fun um and as, as some people have been saying from this, uh, and I, I keep misquoting what Naomi said in the first remote learning resource that I did, but you can learn from crises. Uh, it's not the exact quote she used, um, but there are certain things that people are saying about, I want to use this going forward and use Desmos going forward. You could use this going forward, couldn't you? Um, yeah. When you return to the normal classroom, if you've got the facility in, your, in, in, in school to be able to teach in, um, in computer rooms, et cetera, or you've got, everyone's got a tablet, whatever the school's policy might be, there, there are clearly strengths here to yeah. be used. And so, uh, I think there's an echo of the familiar in it, isn't there? That needs to be brought back into the into the classroom. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Guy, thank you very much for your time. No Good problem. Joining today. Love to speak to you. See you later. Bye.